Welcome to EMC TV Design Validation. Today I would like to tell you about the radiated emission disturbance voltage test that any electronic device must pass to achieve the EMC certification. In part 1 I will talk about theory behind and you will know how your device radiates common mode noise and differential mode noise. Let us start and have a successful day with EMC. Scope. First, we will see EMC test diagram where to find our radiated emission test standard in the EMC tree. Then we will see two graphs of results, so forward thinking before we will know how to do this test and how emission is radiating from our device, we will see two graphs, one with results that are passing the limit and one with results that are failing the limit. After this we will see a noise path, this will be the same graph as for conductor emission part 1, but we will discuss how the noise is radiating. Then we will see antenna structure for differential mode noise and antenna structure for common mode noise. These structures are created in our device, not intentionally, and because we have them, the device has unintentional emission. Next we see view of semi anechoic chamber, is typical shielded chamber that you will use for radiated emission tests to have low background noise environment. Then we will see the semi anechoic chamber cross section to have an idea how the walls of the chamber are constructed. Two types of test setup, conventional for most of the device and example of different system for example for automotive and the last point will be about reducing the noise how to lower the emission from your device and we'll use some acronyms DUT device under test IC integrated circuit SIC semi anechoic chamber CM for common mode noise and DM for differential mode noise Common mode and differential mode noise are radiating from our device and we need to lower the amplitude. EMC test diagram. Electromagnetic compatibility tests are divided to emission and immunity. Emission is divided to radiated emission and conducted emission and immunity is divided to radiated immunity, conducted immunity and ESD, electrostatic discharge. So where to find radiated emission in a typical EMC test diagram? Type of test, emission and radiated. And here we'll be having a couple tests. One of these tests is voltage disturbances and we have standard associated with this test EN5011 is for medical equipment, laboratory equipment and industrial equipment. EN5012 is for automotive. Emission off-board receivers. EN5025 is automotive on-board receiver. EN5014-1 is emission for household appliances. EN5015 is emission for lighting equipment for example LED lamps and EN5032 is for multimedia equipment. That pass forward thinking, what do you want to achieve is lower noise than the limit specified in the emission standard for your device. Noise is measured in dB microvolts per meter versus frequency, typically from 30 MHz to 1 GHz, that depends on your emission standard and we can see that these results are passed because all emission amplitudes versus frequency is lower than our limit lines and we have two limit lines one for Europe EN55022 is old standard for IT equipment now this standard is forward to EN55032 multimedia equipment and we have also limit lines for FCC this is United States standardization FCC part 15 class B 
for measuring antenna 10 meters from your device. You can see that our limits line are referring to QP, quasi peak. This is type of the detector that you need to use to check if your device is under the limit. The algorithm will measure the value at peak values. These values are always higher than quasi peak, but the peak measurements that you can see here are much faster than quasi peak. We are measuring by using peak detector first, and then at critical points, the algorithm will measure again using quasi peak detector because it's much faster. The important thing is that your nose voltage consists of common mode noise and differential mode noise. And you will need to lower them both in your device. For the detected emission, the common mode noise is typically more problematic and you will want to lower its amplitude. Let's see a result that failed this test. Results failed forward thinking, so you can see how much emission you can have above the limit line. This was a device that was badly designed. You can see peaks, so narrow bound emission, and also you can see broadband emission. You used a lot of effort to lower this emission. That is why for radiated emission and conducted emission, you need to think before the prototype is done. So use the rules that are applied for EMC designing your device. Noise path. This is the same diagram used in the video about conducted emission test part one. We have our design and the test and a load, for example, a driver and a motor, a driver and a display. And you can see that our noise common mode and differential mode noise flow into mains and also through our signal lines and between our DUT and our load, common mode noise flows on both cables in the same direction but differential mode noise flow on our plus cable and minus red ring cable together with our normal current flow. For radiated emission, part of the noise going through cables and between the device and going through outside the cables will radiate at certain frequency. And this frequency depends how good antenna structure you have in your device. These structures are unintentional and you need to know that differential mode nodes radiate as loop antennas. This is closed antenna and it's corresponding to magnetic fields. And common mode noise radiate as dipole antenna or its variant monopole antenna and is corresponding to electric fields. Also, your PCP can radiate by having a loop antenna from traces and dipole antenna or monopole antenna between your PCB inside and the housing of the device or between two PCBs if you have them inside. These electromagnetic waves that are created inside your device can be shielded by your housing, but you, if you have a lot of holes and these holes are big enough for the certain frequencies of electromagnetic waves, the noise can radiate through these holes outside from your duty. Let us see how the differential mode noise antenna structure looks like. Antenna structure for differential mode noise. Differential mode noise radiates from loop antennas and every device has them when layouter place traces on a PCB as a closed path for the normal operation of current flow. For example, from one AC to second AC with PCB trace for single ended signal and return as GND plane connecting both ICs. The radiation pattern for loop antennas can be seen here. This radiation pattern normally goes beyond the antenna. I made it smaller, I put it inside to show you 
how the pattern looks like. These loops act typically as small loop antennas that radiate waves mostly in the horizontal position from the side of the loop and in the vertical position there is no radiation. The radiation pattern changes when loop perimeter increase beyond quarter wavelength. There are two parameters you should always keep in mind. First, area. You want the area of the loop to be small as possible. This will decrease your emission for all frequencies for this type of antenna. And second, perimeter. Length is equal to wavelength that determines the first resonance point of the loop antenna. Farther resonances will be an integer multiplier of this wavelength. The tip is design your PCB layout and cables that the loop antennas have a very small area and also a short perimeter if possible. Antenna structure for common mode noise? You can set that dipole antenna is any structure that has a voltage between two open lines and it will have resonance when its length is equal to half of wavelength of the signal applied. In terms of frequency you can calculate first resonance for a wavelength and next resonances for odd multiplies of this frequency. Variation to dipole antenna is monopole antenna created by grounding one of the arms of dipole antenna. In this case, the antenna resonance will be at length quarter wavelength. At resonance, the emission will be the highest. The radiation pattern for a small dipole antenna is the same as that for a small loop antenna. Waves will mostly radiate parallel from side of the arms and in the vertical axis there will be no emission. The radiation pattern for monopole antenna will have only the upper half plane. The source of common mode emission in your device is not, not obvious. For dipole antennas any voltage difference between two conductors can make an antenna. For example, between your PCB ground and the housing and between two PCBs with B2B connections, for example, ribbon cables. You want to connect your housing to your PCB ground to reduce voltage difference between them. For monopole antennas, any cable going outside your device can have a capacitance to the housing and the housing will be the ground that the antenna will reference and that will increase your emission. Tip is design your PCB layout and cables that the dipole antennas are short and less than 120 wavelength if possible. semi anechoic chamber. This is a shielded chamber where you put your device for Emission testing and immunity testing. Your device will be put on the non-conductive table and under this table is rotating metal plate. It will rotate your device. Under the plate there are connection ports and sockets. Also there will be a receiving antenna and this antenna will change depends on the frequency range you measure. The height of the antenna will also change. The aim of the system is to measure the device in the environment without electromagnetic noise and measure emission from the device from all sides and at different heights. Let us see how cross section of semi anechoic chamber looks like. Uh, you can see the cross section of semi anechoic chamber by opening the doors of the chamber. From the outside, the shielded chamber has steel metal cage that will shield noise going into the chamber but inside we will have some reflections. That is why there are ferrite panels, you can see them here, put to absorb noise that is generated by the device under test that in case of metal cage would 
reflect ferrites will absorb noise typically up to 1 GHz. Then you will also have pyramidal absorbers that will absorb noise from 1 GHz to 18 GHz typically. And also you would have white styrofoam squares to protect absorbers and to have more light inside the chamber. Test setup number one. I named it conventional because it will be for most of the devices, all commercial devices and data devices are tested this way. We have non-conductive table and a plate that will rotate in the semi-anechoic chamber. We have different distances that we need to have always and you can see that it is a test volume. Our antenna will measure this space. Also, if we have a device that is floor standing device, you will put it on the Euro palette and you will not have a table here. Let's see different test setup. Test setup number two, automotive. This is much different test setup. It's also in the semi anechoic chamber, but it is referring to the it is referring to the electrical system used in cars. You can see that we have receiving antennas and we have non-conductive table but the table size is bigger and it's not rotating we'll always have our devices and test on the one side and equipment on the other side for example battery that we will normally have in the car listens one for each side and our load box that will simulate loads that we will have in the car between our load box and our Due to will have always harness with the length depend on the standard. And our antenna will be put in front of the harness and at the higher frequencies in front of the duty. And will measure emission. I wanted to show you that depends where you install the device, the measurement system can change. Reducing noise. This is a moment when true engineering starts to lower detected emission. It's not so obvious what to do and sometimes you would need to find a source of your emission because you will not know where the antenna structure is created. Our device under test can look like this when we have a driver and a motor. And we have two lines, digital line for measurements of the motor and starting the motor by relay and the power line when we put current into the motor. For conductor emission, the highest source would be SMPS here and SMPS here, but for radiated emission, it change. It could be also lower frequencies. SMPS will be your source, but for higher frequencies could be your microcontroller and a crystal. Microcontrollers have also PLL that can create noise at frequencies that you didn't even consider. Differential lines, if you have them, if they are not balanced, can create a common mode noise also that will radiate at higher frequencies. And what you need to do is to have proper schematic, so think about where do you want to put filters, and in the coupling capacitor, create a smaller loop for the loop antennas, and the couples common mode current, proper layout, you will not have balanced lines, for example, you will create a common mode noise. And filtering, where to put filters, what type of filtering you should have your design is very important. So for example, we'll have filter on the input of your SMPS, on the output of your SMPS, the coupling capacitor close to your microcontroller, and also you will have a filter at the input connector. Remember, in the early stage of your design, when you create a schematic to apply EMC design rules and later when you're doing the layout also 
apply EMC design rules. Filters should be calculated and or simulated. You need to think about proper schematic of your filters. The tip here is make a low inductive connection between the housing and the PCB ground. This is very important because if you not create connection between your housing and your PCB ground, you will have some differential voltage between them, then you will potentially create an antenna structure that you radiate noise. Thank you. And in the next part, I will talk about EMC filter design for radiated emission by simulation in LT Spice. It will be similar to simulations that I show for conducted emission, but I will focus on higher frequency bandwidth we have for radiated emission testing. See you then.